<laughs> oh, you better allow other people to speak. Okay. okay? okay. They're dominating. Okay. <laughs> well, you people can speak. You just um, 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 unmute yourself. Yeah. Only five minutes. They will control. It. Don't worry. So you can talk about them. No, this is not it. Scary. That's all. Okay. Uh, Tanya, what do you tell me when to uh, start chat, uh, start sharing? Okay. Okay. Yeah, after Bob soon, uh, Bob introduce you to start sharing. Oh. Okay, we're not starting. Are we starting? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. Uh, uh, and who will start? And who will introduce Bob? And the Bob will introduce Dora. Yes, Dora, mm -hmm. I see it. Uh, Bob introduce you. Hi, Dora. Hi. Hi, Hello. Hello. Hi, Dora. Hello, Dora. Oh, She said she would be away. Okay, let's see. 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 Okay, Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. let's move. Our friends are coming in. <音>我们先做一点准备工作哦 
Uh, I'm going to cast it uh, We start it right now. Uh, Dora, you have put your, uh, please unmute. I cannot hear you, Dora. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to start it right now. Hello, welcome to our program. I'm Wu 我们嗯，首先我要特别谢谢，我们要特别谢谢那个薛正玄为我们请到了 Bob 跟 Dora 这两位才华四溢的夫妇，分别在两个月，就是上个月跟这个月来给我们啊、呃、做节目啊、呃，相信上个月啊、呃、，Bob 跟我们讲他关于在建筑、绘画、跟诗词的创作上。给我们分享了他的辉煌的成就，跟他一生的追求，啊，我们现在记忆犹新。那么今天呢，我们也很荣幸的能够啊，有他的老伴 Dora 来跟我们分享，跟跟我们讲讲他专长，他在专业里头他的作品跟他的成就。我记得在很多年前在 GBCC 的集会上。我们也看过 Dora 来给我们呃 present 他的手工 weave 在这个好像是 museum 的这个 wall piece 的 masterpiece， 哎呀，非常非常 impressive， 非常 amazing amazing 的作品。那么我也不用耽误太大家太多时间。现在我们想请他的先生 Bob 来帮我们介绍 Dora， 相信呢他会带给大家呃对这两位有更多的了解跟惊喜。Here's Bob, please. Ah, thank you. Ah, we can't see Bob. Ah, I can. Ah, see half of his face. Ah, ah, half, half. That's right. Okay. We now can't see Dora. No problem. I'll wait for you. Okay. I'll speak English. I'll speak English. Sure. Ah, ah, ah. Thank you, Wu Yu. Ah, I can't imagine a more pleasant job. Than to introduce my wife, uh, not as my wife or the mother of my three children, but as an artist, because uh, she is really the real artist in the family. Uh, compared to her, I'm only a dabbler. Dora is always the first one in the family uh, to notice the subtleties in colors and textures in nature. She's the most persistent person that I know of who keeps improve, improving herself uh, and uh, keeps uh, working with her hands. She's always the one in the family to organize trips to museums or galleries or to go out to have a sketching session. She's always the one uh, who comes up with new ideas of art projects for me and the family to do. Now, she thinks about art projects for the grandchildren to, to do. Dora studied graphic design at the University of, University of Illinois. That was where we met. We were married um, in Boston 61 years ago where she went to graduate school at Boston University. We had three children in quick succession and Dara had to stay home to become a full-time mother to take care of our children. But she managed to work on her art and continue to improve herself as an artist. It was a very remarkable transformation from a housewife, mother, to a hobbyist, weaver, and then finally become a nationally renowned fiber artist. 
Her work has been exhibited in many galleries and museums throughout the country, displayed in building atria, office lobbies, corporate boardrooms, and in private collections. And the most remarkable thing is that all this happened under my eye, in front of my eye. Today, Dora is going to tell you about her story and show you many samples of her work silkscreen, tapestries, sculptures, recycled art, and her highly unique and original fiber art. So here's Dora. So I'm just. Thank you, Bob. That was really nice introduction. Well, I hope um, I really uh, I'm honored to be invited to uh, give a talk of my favorite thing about my fiber art. But first of all, I want to thank Tang Yao Wu and Claudia to invite me. And uh, Tang Yao Wu spent so much time teaching me technology. Uh, about how to share the slideshow with you today. <laughs> Yesterday, and he spent many hours for me and I'm not very good at it. So I really thank him. Otherwise we won't have anything to show except, uh, you know, it won't be a very interesting talk. So I, I have to speak English because my Mandarin is not very good. I hope you don't mind. Uh, I will start out telling you the background and um, how, uh, how I start doing the weaving. And I show you some photos of my craft, my fiber art, and a, a lot of interesting stories of my photos. Uh, for the conclusion, I will tell you how, to, uh, how I keep myself busy at the retirement home that Bob and I just moved there, moved here for a year ago. And, um, it was really an accident how I found weaving as my hobby, which led me become a fiber artist. I never have planned or dreamed to become uh, a fiber artist. I didn't even know what's the meaning of the fiber art. When I was a little girl in Shanghai, I always liked to do arts and craft with my hands. My favorite thing was to learn sewing and uh, embroidery from my mother. She is very good with her hands. But, and I all used to sew a lot of clothes for my two daughters and even dressy winter coats. But later on, I don't have time to sew. I just love to do my artwork. And uh, we, we moved to Hong Kong in 1949. Uh, because everybody moved there after the communists occupied China. And then my family lived in Hong Kong for a while and then we moved in 1952 to Brazil. So I went to high school in Brazil. And after that, I came to United States and very fortunate, uh, I ended up in the same school with Bob and we, we, we just, uh, uh, Got, uh, we call this going steady, you know, at, at my generation. And then, um, and then we got, we, he came to Boston, to MIT graduate school, and I followed him. And actually, he asked me to come here too. So we, we got married in Boston. Uh, I, I was hoping to get a master's degree at BU in, in, graphic design, but I really had a three kids. So I stay home uh, as a, a housewife and a mother for three kids. And, uh, and actually during that time that with uh, the life was not very happy one because I was so busy and I didn't even have time to enjoy my kids, honestly. But uh, I did not have my mother from Brazil, I did not have a help from my mother-in-law who lives in Taiwan. And my husband was always in the office and he's very seldom to be helping me at home. So I, um, 
I was really very frustrated, but I was very lucky. I found weaving, which was a very nice hobby for me. And I could uh, get rid of my frustration and I relax, could relax and I can concentrate on my hobby and not my <laughs> half full life, you know. So, uh, so now I'm going to uh, start telling you how I uh, start uh, find the weaving. So maybe I should start the uh, slides. So it will be interesting for you to see. Uh, shall I, uh, let's see. Presentation. I don't like, I think I lost my, um, it's not on the board. Uh, let's see. Uh, the share content. Yeah, it's not on my, well, I thought I opened it, but it disappeared. Uh, uh, is it above or below the uh, picture? You see uh, the green screen, right? It should be green, yeah. Yeah, it's With not in there anymore, but this, I, I opened it earlier. I uh, wonder where it is. You can just go share the, share the desktop. The desktop? Yeah. Uh, where where is it? This no, it's it's not. In okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay, now you can this, try to find the. Uh, this is not it. It will come. No, you you can come. You now you can go looking for. Uh, for your email. Yeah, no, go to. Looking for, for your PowerPoint and a presentation. Oh. Just, just do as you usually do, how you open up your... Oh, oh okay, 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 let's see. Let's see. Oh, sorry about that. I, I thought I did everything right, but I didn't. Uh, let's see. Okay, did anything come up? Not that email. Uh, Auntie Dora, yeah. you, you're on your desktop. Do you have a PowerPoint um, no, no, icon? No, 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 no. She's doing right. She's actually using the Google Google Drive. Yeah, I can open it. Did you see it? It's nothing come out. It's coming up. Oh, coming out. But my computer is very slow. There it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. What happened? It's, it's right. It's right. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll start a slideshow, right? Right. Okay. Let's see. Oh, you was right. Well, it doesn't. I just still. Yeah, it's coming up. It's a little bit slow. Yeah, my computer is very slow, yeah. Well, anyway, while they're waiting, I would say, one day, uh, my my husband had a big, had a party. I mean, had a, I went to an office party and uh, the host has a, a, a very big loom sitting in the living room and uh, uh, I was asking a lot of questions who belonged to and his wife was the weaver. So I was really interested and fascinated by the loom and the colorful yarn. And she told me, the weaver told me that if you want to go to the mill with me tomorrow, I can take you there. I said, oh, I never went to a mill before. I would love to join you. So I came back with two bags of yarn and I really love it. And then um, I was not a knitter and I was not even a weaver. So my husband thought I was crazy. But anyway, he surprised me to give me a loom for my birthday. So that's how I started to have a, have a loom. So now I will um, show you, uh, let's see. 
Well, this is a room <clears throat> sitting in the corner of our living room. And so I can see all my children play. It's a good play location. And, but it's a little messy with all my yarn and everything. But I, I know what's uh, everything going on in the, uh, in the house. And, <clears throat> and uh, I, um, let's see what I was reading. I joined the Boston Weaver Skill and I turned, took a lot of lessons to know, to learn how to weave um, placemats, scarves, and the, some clothing. But I really enjoyed weaving tapestry technique because I can make pictures uh, on the loom. And this is my first tapestry. And I put it there because to match our uh, our piano. That was a very old, ugly piano we bought for fifty dollars, and it cost us fifty dollars, a third seventy-five dollars to move to our house. Our children hate it because it's so ugly. But after we painted, they love it, and they even practice more. And I, and then I bought uh, a second-hand uh, loom. So I can weave uh, um, small tapestries and the uh, samples. And sometimes I put a frame on the small tapestry, look like a, a picture. Is that, is that from my... Sorry, no. Okay, this is uh, every year uh, Bob and I uh, design and print Christmas cards to our friends and relatives. And uh, this year we made a large one and with lots of color. And he usually helped me to uh, cut the stencil and I will put it in the silk screen. And we, we just spend a lot of time printing ourselves. And uh, a lot of our friends love this, this uh, Christmas card. They all came back, wanted us to give them another one, unfolded card. So they frame it on their wall. And so actually I like this uh, design too. So I made it a tapestry, 38 by 38, and I still have it. Um, oops, I went back on wrong one. Uh, let's see. And this is another Christmas card, but, and I made, uh, it was a little bigger. So this time I use it as a silkscreen print and I sell them uh, in the open house, stu open studios. And, uh, and I also uh, made it a tapestry, a big one. The tapestry tap technique is very slow. This piece was, kind of big uh, and uh, I spent like a two or three years to finish. It's the size is like 56 by 60 inches. And that's, uh, I decided not to do any more tapestries. So I saw this, uh, this loom and to make room more, more space in, in the, my studio. I have, uh, before that, I have this uh, tapestry weaving halfway and Bob had a, a big party for the architect friends. And one of the honor guests was uh, uh, the Dean of MIT uh, school and his name was Pietro Boluski. And he saw this tapestry. He said, when you finish this tapestry, I like to purchase it. I said, really? I was surprised, but then after, I, but I wasn't sure whether he was serious or not, you know. So after I finished this tapestry, I sent a picture, and uh, right away he said, "Yes, I want this uh, tapestry," you know. And so I was so encouraged with this sale. I was just a beginner weaver, and uh, he's a very important person. Uh, you know, so I was, I was very encouraged. 
And uh, um, actually in a few years, uh, not too long ago, and he, he passed away. And his wife sent me a letter, told me that my tapestry was donated to his church. So I'm really very pleased to find a, new, a very nice home. And this is a very old picture. Actually, uh, my kids getting older and uh, they all went to Chinese, uh, Newton Chinese School. And one year we have a, a fair for Newton uh, Chinese School and a, a photographer came uh, from the newspaper, came and uh, want to take a picture of us and then put it on the uh, local newspaper. So he told us, you all make some Chinese craft together and I shoot a picture of you and it will be on newspaper, everybody will see. So <laughs> actually it will turn out, these are my three children and uh, they all know how to make zongzi very well. And so uh, uh, it was a very successful event. We raised a lot of funds for, the, for this. And actually, um, I made a lot of artwork through Zongzi. I thought maybe you people would be interested to see. Uh, some of you must have learned, know how to do those Zongzi. You can make different sizes with a strip of paper. And, and I made a lot of these Zongzi for my Christmas trees. And I saw it a lot in the Christmas, uh, in the craft fair or Christmas fair. And, uh, um, and sometimes I make a small one, like a small miniature uh, piece for a miniature show. These are also zongzi wrapped with uh, embroidery threads. And I just add some black and white uh, lines to make um, some movement. And uh, uh, let's see, I think I have more. And this is similar to it, but I make it into a necklace. I add some beads to make it more decorative. Uh, oops, not going. I don't know why it's not going. Let's see. Oops, I cannot go any place. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, so this is another zongzi. Uh, it's a bigger wall hanging made of different size of uh, uh, zongzi and individual wrapped and I mounted in a 26 by 26 frame, which I wrapped with yarn. And then I put a plastic case over it. Let's see, oops, it's go on uh, another one. Well, this is, uh, I started wrapping uh, circles because uh, I discover all these circles at the, uh, at the liquor store, like a slits and Budweiser, they all have a little coaster and they're very nice to make Christmas ornaments. I sell them in the craft, yeah, let's see. And uh, then I discovered their little ones and different sizes one at the Children's Museum uh, Recycle Center. So I got a lot of them. I made, these are very popular in, my, in the craft fair and I wrapped it with the embroidery thread. And uh, I usually make these little ones uh, during, um, in the, uh, when I'm traveling on the airplane, and sometimes uh, on the airport. Uh, and this is uh, really good because um, it kill time and, and then I won't get so bored. And, uh, uh, and it's very easy to carry. The circles are small and the embroidery thread took a very little space in my carry on bag. The only challenge was to hide my small scissors so it would not be taken away as security check. You know, they are very strict about it. And uh, this is um, another decorative wrapping I learned from my children went to summer camp and with using with two sticks, but I use branches 
just to make some decorations. This is just a picture. I think one of the first time, the uh, first uh, booth I had, it's a very small, uh, but I put everything in it. Uh, and the kids, they helped me to set it up. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's really fun. I, did, I went, did a lot of uh, craft fair. And sometimes um, at the end, all the artists will exchange uh, our things not sold. So, so we always come home with the very nice gifts from different artists. Uh, but uh, oh, this is another one. This actually was my last craft fair. It was in the Cordova Museum Art Fair. And uh, my children were all grown up and Bob's niece and the daughter came to visit me. And you know, that little baby, we just went to her wedding this summer. So that was really long time ago. Uh, the kids grown up, after the kids grown up, I no longer uh, can do any craft anymore. So, and also the kids are getting older and uh, my oldest one is almost ready for college. So I want to start to be a serious artist to maybe to make a few, make more money. Uh, otherwise I have to go out of work. So um, this is um, in 1975 in Boston had a bicentennial uh, exhibition, uh, not exhibition, but they, it's a celebration which they, they wanted to have a fiber show at the Boston City Hall. And all this art pieces has to be big and unique. And I submit this piece, 100 round circles made from a masonite board cut out from the speakers. Each circle was about nine inches across. And uh, I, uh, I did one circle at a time. So everywhere I went, I would bring a couple circle to, to, to do. And uh, I took it, took it to the beach. I took it to the playground with the kids. So while I'm waiting, I did all this. Uh, I'll show you the other side. That's the, the, the other side of circle. After I made all the circle, hundred of them, then I tied them together. And, uh, and so the, the people can walk around it. Uh, this is me when I was uh, pretty young and skinny. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. The next one. That after the show from Boston City Hall, it was sitting in. It was hanging in our hallway for a couple of years. Then it was sold to a lobby of Boston, uh, to a lobby of Dockside Place at Boston Wharf. The funny thing is after it was installed in the lobby, a robber uh, went into the lobby once and somehow they liked my wall hanging, but it was too heavy and uh, too, too big. So they, they cut out two circles on the bottom uh, in the, for the middle part. And so, um, the, the residents was so upset because they missing two circles in the bottom. They were desperately trying to find the artists to repair and to replace them. So finally they found me and I have um, all the records of my artwork. So, so I, it was very easy for me to, to replace two missing circles and, and they were very happy about it. And the insurance all covered, so nobody lose. Uh, the next one is a very important uh, piece because uh, this is called variation squares. I was trying to do a lot of square ones. And uh, with the important thing because I discover uh, the three dimension effect 
on the last panel on the right hand side, there's smaller squares. And, uh, and I tried to build it into a, 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 big a big square and make this square a little bit smaller and deeper. So the viewer can see the different color as if the color moves when the viewer moves from one side to the other. So later on, most of my artwork uh, were done uh, with this technique, uh, which people really like. And lots of time they think it's like a computer chips, uh, very high tech. Uh, so appeal to a lot of uh, people. Now, uh, the next, next slides I'm going to show you uh, is a big commission because Bob just finished a designing office building in Woburn. It has three story atrium, which his client wanted to decorate the wall with a big fiber artwork because for, for warm, for the warm and for acoustic reason. Well, the, his client, no, 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 I was, his client uh, think I did not, I have never have this experience working big. So he, he said, maybe you should make a small sample. See the, behind me, the picture behind me was uh, the sample I made. And Bob finally, Bob, a client finally, uh, let me, Got, uh, got me the job and uh, I start weaving. You see, see, I have very small space because this is a, a very large uh, wall hanging, has 48 panels. And, but miraculously, I did it and finished in such a small uh, space. And, uh, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, every job has been not go smoothly because this is a public space. So it requires fireproof. So every single panel has to be dipped in to a fireproof liquid. And, and then each of the panels would be handed up on the ceiling. Couple, couple of them fell down and damaged. So I have to replace them. But luckily I did not have to, uh, the deadline was not so tight. So I managed to finish. It was, uh, even though I received very low payment for the month of work, the reason I got this job because they don't have enough uh, budgets and none of the artists could would not be willing to do it. But, but I was willing to do anything at that time. So, um, so I got this job and I was really happy. Uh, I, later on, a lot of other architects, uh, interior designer, art agent came to look for me. And even this, this owner built the second building, Unicorn Park, two or 300. And he gave me the job for, uh, for, the, for the cafeteria. Uh, now, uh, the next one, this one, uh, Bob was very nice. He decided he's going to help me and build a stand for me, for my wall hanging. And then even build, a, order to sh make some shelf for my artwork so I could um, weave very fast and more comfortable sitting on the seat. And my, so that's how I, got my business started. And uh, let's see. Uh, this is another job Bob gave me. It's a GCA corporation in Burlington. And um, I'm really very uh, fortunate and grateful to, to my husband that uh, gave me so much support and helped me to build a business and helped me to build my career as an artist. Uh, and uh, later on, I really don't need his help anymore because every, 
a lot of art agents, a lot of architects come to, to me. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, artists, I mean, one of the proposal was uh, asked me to make for a Cambridge River Office Park to make a proposal for three pieces. This is a finished one, two, two pieces in the lobby, entrance lobby, and the middle one was not showing, is in the, in the elevator lobby. You better tell them what the previous one was. It was a study, a proposal. It was a proposal. Clients, no. Oh, oh, Bob said, uh, I should show, this is a proposal for the clients. And I have a sample on the side and also a rough drawing. Uh, on, and then after it was approved and uh, I, they gave me a deadline to finish. That's how, how it is done. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, this was, it's not a very good picture, but uh, it was, it, this is a piece called Dawn to Dust. It, the owner of a new building in Burlington really loved this piece. He said, I wish it's uh, bigger or something I could use it for my new building. So I, and um, he, she, he approached me. I said, I could make one, something for you, you know. So I went to see the site. Uh, I added three on top and three in the bottom. And uh, I did a little drawing. So let's see. This is how it looked like. It's, it's, it, they were very happy because it looks like it's specially designed for that space, but it was just added on. So it was very, very successful. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, a piece uh, commission I received from a New Jersey. Uh, can't remember the name of the city, but uh, it's 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 supposed to be hung next to a window with a lot of sunlight. So I decided to weave something more subtle color. But every piece I made, I always assemble in the basement floor and see how they look like. And this is doing installation and it's, it's uh, very subtle. And I think after a few years, I don't know how it's looking like now, but uh, I think if it would not be so bad, if I have a bright color, red or blue uh, or orange, I think it will fade very badly. Oh, this is uh, a proposal I made for GTE lobby in Denver. You're supposed to, um, a headquarter of GTE, they have a lot of exhibition cases in front of the, the big two big walls. And I suggest to have a, a 40 by 40 inches. And, uh, and, and the an architect said, it need a bigger than 40 by 40. But I said, I cannot do the bigger than 40 by 40 because it won't fit in my car. The reason 40 by 40, my, my trunk will fit in the car. And, uh, and besides, you're going to pay more if, you, if you're going to. So finally, we had an agreement uh, to stack them. Stacker. Stagger them. And uh, uh, it turned out to be very nice. This is, uh, uh, and the other side is, uh, so I call this, uh, that, oops, that one is sunrise and this one sunset. Actually, it's, it looks so much better uh, with a staggered and everybody is happy with it. Uh, this is uh, uh, another uh, commission uh, in Chicago one of the lobby in the downtown and three, three panels. This is the big one uh, for the entrance lobby. 
and um, there are two small ones at the elevator lobby. Um, this, uh, the wall was uh, made of uh, uh, granite, so it was very difficult to drill holes. So they told me if I could put, put the panels together, bounded together so they don't have to make too many holes. So I put six of panels together and, um, and so uh, they only need to drill four holes. It was, uh, took a long time to install. The, the bad thing is when during the shipment, they broke a couple of strands uh, good thing um, it was a small damage. I could glue them with the, with the yarn onto the wood frame. So everything seemed to be in order. And I went up to the lift after they installed and to fix the yarn, which is scary, but uh, I don't look down, it's okay. And I was much younger too. And this is finished uh, completely. And uh, my, at that time, my daughter uh, was working in Chicago and I asked her to find a, a photographer to shoot some picture of the lobby. And uh, the photographer asked my daughter and his wife to pose in this photo. So it helped to see the scale of my wall hanging. I think they are very good model because they look so natural. Uh, in the picture, it looks so much better. And my daughter's here. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> now, when, my, when our three children were all attending private college in one year, I was really happy that I received so many big commissions that I could, con I could contribute to paying their college tuition. Now, a lot of people ask me how I did my wall hangings. So I will share with you some photos of my studio. I use a very sturdy frame first to, uh, for the foundation. And I usually hire a carpenter to build it. Uh, I, I use different square sizes, uh, depends on, on the project. For, to fit in different space. Well, I also um, work on the design and then um, and pick out the yarn and then I weave, uh, I just wrap. It's, it's sort of wrapped, uh, wrapped and then all the squares will come out. This one, I have bigger squares on the side and the small squares in the middle. Just looks like the, uh, the pictures, uh, the sketch I made. I, um, I uh, wrap the strand one at a time. And then after I finish one row, uh, and then I will change a horizontal and then change change to vertical. And this is how, how I do my wrapping. Uh, I usually uh, enjoy listening to um, talking book or radio. Uh, and you see the tension is pretty strong for the yarn. So it, it's, it's absolutely necessary to have a very sturdy frame. Otherwise, the whole, whole frame will be twisted. Uh, it was around 1980 when the good economy in the United States started. A lot of new office buildings along Route 128 were popping out so quickly that kept many art agents very busy. My fiber art became popular because they not only look good in the contemporary space and they also help acoustic. But unfortunately, by the end of 80s, the economy was turning downward 
I received very few commissions and I had more free time to, to do my own art. So I start having showing at different gallery. This is uh, the show at the uh, Newton Library. I'm sure some of you might have attended. They have very nice show there. And I worked, this is a piece I, I taught the parishioner to wrap the circles. And, uh, and then um, I, I glued them together and, uh, and put it and mounted on the, uh, our old red shades that, that window, shade. window shade throughout <laughs> and always kept in the basement. So I, uh, I'm glad to use a lot of old stuff the store in the basement. And, and then uh, saw this and uh, suggested I should call this title Loving Hands. And I thought that was a very appropriate title. Actually, every, every art piece, I have a name for it. Uh, and uh, they, they're like my children. And uh, so, uh, so I can identify them this piece, but I need to always need the help uh, from my children. This piece, my son gave me the title called Tangled Tangle. This actually made of uh, CD cases was given by my friend who worked at Stable. She called me one day, she said, Dora, I have a lot of CD cases in the trash and I can bring you as many as you want. I said, bring me, bring me three bags. So she gave me three bags and I stuffed them into uh, with all the yarns made into an abstract painting with fiber. And I submitted to a recycle show at the Fuller Craft Museum in Brockton a few years ago. Uh, and uh, um, it was such a, successful show was written on the Boston Globe a couple of times and they extend the show two more months. And after the show, my piece was selected into a special group to travel around the country for two years. So this, this piece had been traveled for, went through a lot. I got so interested in, in those uh, recycled stuff um, after the show. So I collect everything in the basement. And my, my husband um, always say, you collect a lot of junk. So, um, so I have some cans that are collected. So I want to use them up. I have to be careful not to become a junk art like he's, like my husband always complaining about. So this one, I made of 10 candles. This is also, this I when I was babysitting my two grandchildren, they were playing around in around uh, Newton's uh, library in front of the fence art. One of my pieces was selected to be fence printed for fence art, and the fence art are made of plastic, and they are durable for rain or snow, and they were hung around city of Newton fence. And, uh, and they, this piece was made, uh, it's not so big. It was really uh, from the packing material cardboard. Inside has a lot of holes. And I had a really good time stuffing yarn inside of the holes. And, uh, and after a year, uh, those fence arts, they change a new one. The old one they give to the artists free. And so I had them in the basements because so big. And during the pandemic, uh, a, uh, the, there was some temporary hospitals and uh, they need some artists uh, work to show the show in the contemporary hospitals. So uh, I joined a group of the artists donate all our fi fiber uh, fence art for them. So I don't no longer have it. 
but I'm glad to have a picture. And in 1989, I joined the corporate gallery in Lexington on the Mass Avenue called Depot Square Gallery. This is uh, in the beginning when I joined, we only have one level on downstairs and we have only 12 people. But uh, later on, we expanded to first floor and the basement and we have uh, uh, 20 artists. And it was very, uh, we were running business very well. We have uh, uh, managed to, to support Gary and we sold quite a lot. And this is the basement part. We have a small show. My piece is on the wall and the Porter, the Porter artist was uh, having on this pedestal. Uh, oh, this is a story about this piece. Uh, when one day when I was Gary sitting in the, uh, I was sitting in the gallery and uh, a blind person came and this, with, the, with his girlfriend who was describing um, my work to him. The blind man asked me if he could touch them. I gave him permission to go ahead since he's blind. I felt so happy just watching her, watching his smile, smiling face as he was touching my piece. To my surprise, he, uh, he wanted to purchase this piece, which is 26 by 26. He said, because this piece had the most texture. Before he left, he told me he had never enjoyed so much in an art gallery. I was so touched. I was so happy that he came in. So I, so I thought, oh, this is a really wonderful thing I did. Oh, you probably know this is a picture of Bob giving a talk of his artwork in my gallery. Well, that year was Bob's 70th birthday and also his retirement. He happened, it happened that it was my turn to have the main gallery space to show my artwork. I decided to give Bob a special birthday gift to him to show his watercolor at my gallery space. It turned out his one person show was so successful that he helped our Gary to make a lot of income. That's how he became a member at Depot Square Gallery. But unfortunately in 2009, there was a big recession. My Depot Square Gallery business was very bad. Buying artwork is luxury. When people did not have extra money, nobody came to buy art. So we could not buy, or could not pay our expensive rent. We were forced to shut down for good after 28 years of business. So we became homeless artists. We were showing in other places thinking maybe we could find another uh, gallery, but uh, the members, some of the members getting too old, they want to retire. Some of them moved away, somebody had bad health. So we, we sort of gradually dissolved. But I was very lucky. In that year, I was invited to show a big show in, in, the, in the gallery uh, in San Francisco. Some of you may have, uh, may have been to San Francisco. Um, this is a San, Fran a San Francisco, um, what they call, art center, art cultural center. <laughs> and uh, they have a very big uh, ex Gary, and I sent about 50 pieces. 
and they have a high ceiling. The, the piece with the little, uh, the red squares up to the, like a stairs, that piece called red cubes. And I put all different kinds of sculptures and it was a very nice show. And that particular uh, cube, the curator for that show really loved. And that in, after a few years later, uh, she got a new job at the San Francisco, San Francisco Asian Art Museum. She, she's, she become a, a, in charge of the contemporary department. And she, uh, she, one day she called me, asked me if I still have that red cubes. Wonder if she could donate that piece to, to their museum for permanent collection, if I could donate that piece. Actually, that was a really good timing when she called because we were just downsizing. I'm planning to move to, to a retirement home. So I was really happy that this piece went, it uh, will be picked up uh, a week, a month later uh, to, to the Asian uh, Museum. So if you go to San Francisco, Asian Art Museum, you might see this piece. Well, that was the opening for my big show. There's so many people show up. See, I made especially those, those uh, circles for this, big, for this show because there are so many, um, so, such a high ceiling. And I thought that would be, a, would be nice to have some, some circles. And uh, and all, a lot of my relatives and friends show up to uh, to to this uh, big opening. And of course, uh, Bob was there to help me supervise how to hand the show. The show was went really well. It was uh, uh, my best and the biggest show I ever had. So let's see. Now, um, this is uh, the last part of my talk. It's, uh, it's it, I was uh, taught, talk about uh, how I share my artwork after I moved to a senior living community called LaSalle Village. Uh, they invite me to have a show so I have a, a this, this is my retrospective show, including um, my tapestries, my fiber art, and my recycle art. I call this show Fiber Unlimited. I have about uh, 34 pieces. This is the reception LaSalle Village gave me. And the residents, these are the mostly residents at the LaSalle Village, Village had never seen my work and they really enjoy my show. I receive so much praises and the gratitude. Everywhere I went, they thanked me for, for putting up a show for them to enjoy. So I really very happy to be able to share. And I also gave four workshops to teach them how to do the circles. And uh, it's really good exercise for old people's hands. So they all enjoy. And I also gave a talk, just like the talk I'm giving you, uh, how I become a fiber artist. So I was very happy uh, that um, it was a big turnout. And in the Furukre, in, in the um, La Salle village, sometimes we have field trips. And this is one of the field trips we went 
to uh, Fuller Craft Museum in Brockton. I happen to have three pieces showing there with, to celebrate 100 years anniversary. So I went to- well, Of what? Of the Boston, Boston we Of the Boston Weaver skill. And they want to take a picture of me uh, with one of my show, uh, one of my artwork with uh, 100 gold CD cases. And uh, it was showing there for three months. The show just have taken down last month. Oh, this is my last photo. I just to let you know that this is my little studio in my small apartment in the La Salle Bridge. But I'm still pretty happy that uh, I still can work there, even though it's small. And uh, people like to come and visit me sometimes and see how my studio. Well, this is the end of my talk. Thank you all for, uh, for listening. And uh, I could uh, ask any questions you have. And Bob answer, would- Answer uh, any questions you have. Yeah, I will answer any questions you have. And uh, Bob will be with me and you can ask him questions about his, his, his artwork too. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, stop. Uh, should, I, should, I, should I do this? Thank you, Dora, for your. You put a great show. Oh, and we I really try? enjoy us. We oh, really thank enjoy you. It. Thank you. Very good. Very oh, talented. Yeah. Oh, should, I, should I push the stop slide? Okay. Um, okay. Stop. 大家有沒有問題可以先提問。假假沒有的話,我可不可以先問一下,may okay. okay. I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I noticed that um your pieces are like like a three dimensional, but yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure it's all flat on the face, right? All all, all of them it shows is the effect by the colors, by the colors of the, of the yarn, right? It looks so three dimension, three dimensional. Is it caused by the color effect? Yeah. It, it is three dimensional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. But it's self. Oh. It's a step. Yeah. Uh -huh. So because, the surface. Because the yarn, it's built up of a, a cross section as a three dimensional. Oh. But how do you tie the knots to stop, to stop uh, the color? I tie the knot at the back. So the I use a lot of yarn at the back. And the, at, the, at the back, I usually cover with a piece of cloth. And uh, so it will not be uh, accidentally uh, break the yarn. And oh. also looks so much neater. I see. Yeah. Oh, OK. Thank you. But sometimes, like, I, I had a, a three pieces in Beth Israel Hospital in Solarian Room, and they want intentionally want to cover up with a classic case, but it's okay it's, because it's a public space. So I let them cover it as classic case. Okay. So when you design your pieces, do you draw it first? But yes, how do you know I the color draw. coordination? Yeah, I do draw. I really actually, in the beginning, I draw very small, small, uh, small sketch. I in see. White. And then I later on uh, make it into a bigger sketch with color pencil and uh, actually draw out the squares. So especially I if I have to present it to my client, so everything is more in detail so they know exactly how it's going to turn out. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Oh. Can I have a question? And this is a wonderful talk. And you are you just have admirable creativity. And it's amazing how uh, the little basic thing and you extend to such a great creation. I was wondering if you would consider to have a, a workshop for us in GBCCA as well. Well, it's possible, yeah. Uh -huh. 
if it doesn't comfort my schedule. You know, La Salle Village keep me very busy. <laughs> they have uh, programs, uh, they have uh, uh, classes. So, but I will, I'll be willing to give a workshop, you know, uh, if it if fit my schedule, sure, yeah. That's great. That was, so I, I assume uh, Yao will contact you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's using... great. I think the GBCC needs you to, to dress up too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, these are things most are very not that uh, difficult. And uh, mm -hmm. it's very good for the hands mm -hmm. and exercise. Yeah, and uh, Yao yeah, just had a great idea. I was maybe you can organize a work group and you have a sketch, so the whole group will make something donated to GBCCA. Wow, and to that's hang, great. To hang on GBCCA walls. Like the, like the uh, church project. Like the church, <laughs> Bob said, like the church project. I think about yeah. okay, because it is a lot of work because like the church project I made, um, uh, I have to design first and choose the color. And uh, so every, everything will look good. If they design, if they make all the color, everything colored, they don't go together. So I cannot put into as a group, you know, yeah. they, make, they make their own one color, you know, so there's no organization. So it, it needs to be planned ahead. And I give them the color. You do this. You do that. You do, and then I put together. So it will look like a, a really a nice big piece. Sure. Yeah. 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 If I'm not getting too old, that is. <laughs> so yeah. I, I do things much slower now, and uh, so you know everything takes time. <laughs> so I cannot promise, but I have the interest that will keep me young. Something yeah. to look forward to, yeah. You're too young enough. <laughs> you keep going, sure. Keep going. That's usually keep going, make a person more young and active, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. useful, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, I, actually, Bob and I were talking about the couple project for GBCC, but I haven't started doing One is the kitchen, right? Another one is the uh, acknowledgement and board for the acknowledge all the contributors to GBCCA. Yeah, I think it was you two's talent. I'm so excited. I think we're really looking for, I should be more engaged to those two projects. Great, good to hear that. Yeah, I have, I have a question for Dora. Yeah. You have such talent on colors. When did you notice you, you have that? How did you decide? How did you discover your tenant and get the confidence that the, the call up the people were like? Oh, sometimes uh, the client would say, oh, well, I like to have something in blue or something, you know. But most of the time, they don't know what color they want. And I just look at the surrounding, you know. Uh, if, if it's too much light, you know, I cannot use something too strong color. You know, well, uh, because otherwise it will fade, you know, the color will fade. And, uh, uh, but usually I just uh, sense that surrounding with the furniture, what color will go well with the furniture. After all, I have the background in art. I learned from school, the design, you know, art. So I get the advantage of it. So the more I work, the more I, the, I, it just, uh, I just intuitive knows this is the right color to do, to do it, yeah. So uh, it helps. Uh, and I always like to work with color and uh, color makes people happy. And uh, also uh, subdued color goes well. If you want something quiet, you need some subdued color. I remember uh, some, somebody was looking for something for, for people working um, all day long with, to rest their eyes. So they want to look up, there's an artwork, I have to design something. So I have to make something very quiet, but interesting. 
strong design, but quiet color. So they, they can rest and they can rest their eyes. And that, that's what they want me to do. So that's why I choose the color. Thank good you. question. Very good question. Yeah. yeah. Because every time I pick a color for the house, after painted, I say, oh no, this is, doesn't look as good as I really think when I pick up the color. I say, well, must have a lot of not tenants, or can you be trained? You say you, you do have some training, but uh, mostly it's, uh, it's the tenant you have, nature born, right, in your gene, right? But, but everybody has a favorite color. But sometimes favorite color you change too. <laughs> I used to like blue as my favorite. Now I like something else yeah, because they, they all have so many hues, different color. Like a wall wallpaper, there's so many different kind of wall color paint and all that. So uh, so now I I kind of like orange. <laughs> well, orange make people happy, you know. Uh, mm. Bright color stands out. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. I really uh, mm, like the one with sunrise and sunset. How you make it like a circle, the design. That's yeah. really something. Yeah. I think it turned out very well. I, I thought uh, uh, the architect has suggested to make up and down and using using uh, the, the, the wall space, you can lead your eyes to circle. I think uh, uh, that was a very successful. Uh, you know. That's amazing. That's really great. Well, Bob was telling me, how do I do the circle? I asked the circle actually change the color. The color has to be tied in the front. When you tie the knot in the front, you have to hide underneath it. That's why, and I was telling you, it's three dimensional because it has a little room. And sometimes, you know, because inside has some room, um, I can feel some something within inside to help the acoustic. Some, uh, some, I think one of the clients said, well, we need the more acoustic. Could you put something inside the, uh, in, inside the wall hanging? Actually, I did feel in something inside the wall hanging to help uh, more acoustic, to absorb sound. Do you ever go to the hi-fi store? The hi-fi store, there's some, uh, some, some mm. foam in the shape because they want to, to have a sound bounce back and forth, you know? So uh, Bob said, maybe you should sell more things in the hi-fi store, but I never did. I was so busy. I don't want to, uh, they probably won't want to spend time, money on the artwork. You know, they, they just made the phone to just to have a, have sound bouncing the sound. But uh, my if my first intention was not for acoustic, but it turned out uh, it helps acoustic. That's beneficial for my. <laughs> but it is you know people uh, uh, wear high heels and make a lot of noise on the floor when they walk, and that will help uh, the acoustic if I have wall hanging hanging there. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, a great presentation. It's a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, how do you preserve the fiber or the yarn? Because it's constantly under the exposure of sunlight and humidity. Well, uh, the, the yarn, it's, yes, uh, I don't really, I just hand on the wall. And I usually clean it with a little brush, the toothbrush, if it's small. If big, I use a, a walk, uh, use a vacuum cleaner. And uh, so you, you get, you collect dust. But mm. uh, don't hang in the, in the kitchen if you're going to cook Chinese food. That's worse. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> get That's true. So <laughs> other, otherwise, it's just dust. You could dust it off. 
And uh, of course, um, sometimes uh, uh, it, it's not completely war or malt proof. Sometimes you might have malt getting there, but if you clean it, mm -hmm. make sure there will, won't be malt get into your. But I, I never have trouble problem like that. I mm -hmm. always use a little toothbrush and and mm -hmm. it's really pretty uh, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. One time, so any pretreatment job, the fiber or the young. Uh, some people spray something for uh, for proof, but I never fireproof. not fireproof. Malt proof, or no, not malt. Mm -hmm. They they spray something like a fabric, you know. Just, but I never use anything. I have never have any problem, and uh, it's just like clothing. If you leave it out, where it's exposed, I think if you, I usually if if it's a piece of yarn, I wrap it with a plastic bag, you know, right then put mm -hmm. it. In then I will, uh, it will protect it from moss. That's the only thing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Are you a knitter? Are you, do you? No, no. <laughs> I'm not good with um, knitting, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I admire your work. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How long it takes for like a, people has no experience to be able to like produce a decent product. Oh, how long is, is your question is how long I do my work or how long? Or how long for like, you know, people never learn this, how oh. long it takes to, yeah, to be able to, you know, make something presentable. Well, that's difficult to answer uh, because uh, depends uh, what uh, if you do it more often, you'll be faster. Every everything is like that. If you do it more often, you're used to it. But if you're not used to it, then it takes longer. Mm -hmm. so I I don't know how how I could answer that. Okay. And uh, you all, you know, you need that a big loom to to do the big piece, right? Oh. Yes, you do need a big room. But some people have small room. You could, mm -hmm. you could sew them together. Or if there's a weave, you can fold them with you know, like a two, two, uh, like a two pieces folded. And then you can open it up. You can mm -hmm. call it double weave. But you have to take classes with it. Yeah, yeah. And you have to loom. And if you are beginners, you could also use a frame and then you have a wall. And then I think the best thing for you, if you want to start learning, go to the library. There are a lot of books on weaving and you can, they also help you see the, the small loom you can make it yourself. And you can, mm -hmm. with a needle, you can try out to start with. And mm -hmm. it, it's nice. And then I start out very small things and then get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and it's, if you're interested, you will really get into it and you'll love it. You enjoy, you're, I'm so absorbed, I forget everything. <laughs> so, so you have to have a passion. If you have a passion, you love it, go for it. I think I, I found weaving, I really enjoy. Now I'm doing off loom weaving. I'm so absorbed, I sometimes forget to cook. But now I don't have to cook because I live in the old people and they serve dinner. So, so I'm very happy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do something you enjoy. That's all I, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one thing you are very unique is uh, you, you know how to start with one thing. Then you can multiply it into the such beautiful artworks. Um, well, I know how to make the zones when I was a kid. Okay? Oh, that's yeah. good. 
Okay, I think to watch it. No, no, even forget okay. how to do it. I mean, you now you start with making tunes. And, uh, so, what I'll do is I'll call you, and if you have an issue, also then with the tablet, then it must be some form of an issue that you would want tech support. Do you have anyone that helps you with any the technical issues. Can someone, can someone, yeah. Okay. Who was talking? What I know to do would be to... Can you please mute um, yourself? You Stella, would you please mute? Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's really wonderful to see how you, you, you start with one thing, you can make such a beautiful piece together. Well, I think you have to be so interested then you want to find out. I saw a circle in the book and I want to find out how it's made. So I try this, try that, try this, try that. I have a lot of, like I'm waiting for the kids for their piano lesson, for their swimming lesson. I have to wait there. But if I, I think I will be really bored. Some people will read. But I'm not a reader. I'm not very good in, in reading things. So I'm good in hands. So I try this, try that. And I discover something so excited. I want to discover more, you know. That's mm -hmm. how I get one thing to another. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, that's wonderful. So, <laughs> so you, 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 you people might find something that you like. You can go, you know, everybody has a different talent. I think I found... I found my niche, and so so that made me very happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad Bob helped me a lot to get me started. But I also <laughs> help him, you know, help him to to go start a watercolor. Uh, and you need somebody to push, and it's good that we help each other. Mm -hmm. That's what husband wife for we're supposed to help each other right <laughs> i know you and claudia and you know Diop and claudia you had such a you know work so much for this this talk i think it's wonderful you know uh but your program and you're so involved with gpcca i think that that's very meaningful i cannot organize like you you know cannot do things like you <laughs> so that's your talents yeah Yep. Yeah. That's, that's kind of so bad that we really like to see so many talents within the GBCCA community. Yeah, yeah. I think they are not. Yeah, well, we just have to find them out. <laughs> but I was very shy about it. Yeah, I, I'm not a very good public speaker, but uh, I try my best. But I'm, I'm glad you people find it interesting. I'm glad you give the talk because I know you are an artist, but I didn't realize you did so much and it's so beautiful. Thank you. You made me so happy. Made the day. I think the most important thing is two things. I think the first thing is that you can you can pursue your what you like. You can achieve a lot, and also you both of you. Can uh, complement it to each other, you know. 合作的这么好, it's really great. I well, we married 64 years, uh, 61 years. Very, very lucky. Very, you know, 真的是很让人羡慕, 能够 complement it to each other, 真的好, 这么好的, 有这么大的 achievement, it's really great. One thing is you, you, you enjoy what you do. I think that makes a lot of difference. If you don't enjoy what you do, then you know you cannot pursue. That's right. Further, yeah. Uh huh. But this is a very nice, uh, uh, very nice, uh, you know, program you people have. Every every other month you have uh, different people to, uh, yeah. to share. It's not easy job, isn't it? <笑><笑>他要我很了不起大家还有没有什么问题可以再跟这个大家共有没有问有没有问题要问你 Dora或者是Bob的 这个机会很难得的<笑><笑> 
Thank you, Pekka. Uh, well, well, I really thank you for inviting me and sharing and, and uh, this, uh, my, uh, my art. And I hope you people uh, find interesting and learn something. Do you, do you have one project that you two work together? Do between, I have one? Between you and the Bob, do you have any any other work which you are thinking about to work together? Uh, working together, like a self screen. Well, we did self screen together. Now I really, oh, uh, we were thinking about uh, in La Salle Village, we're going to start a sketching uh, session, like a Anybody can come, uh, go, go, go to you know a special place like uh, do some still life, or we can draw each other, you know, like a sketching together with other people, and that's the project we're thinking about. They they ask us to be in the art committee, in charge of art committee, so we have to set up a show every two months in their exhibition place, you know, wow. the place that's. Uh, uh, I had a show, so so like a, right now there, there's an artist who's having a show until the end of December, but in January and February we decided to everybody uh, live here. They have a special art piece they like to share, so they they can show on January and February. Hmm. Something like that. You no, know, they just keep us very busy. <laughs> so, so they want us to be healthy. Okay, <laughs> uh, I think it's a great presentation and really impressive artwork. Um, I'm very impressed by the achievement of both of you. And uh, well, I hope to be able to see the real thing someday. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. Uh, all right. Yeah, you 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 look very nice. You you don't change very much. <laughs> Still, that, that's just the camera. <laughs> that's great. It's special from artists too. <laughs> it's like a like a what a sunrise sunset. Beautiful. <laughs> Your use of colors are really um, very nice. Thank you. I really like to see the, the real thing, to see the the uh, three-dimensional um, artwork. It's very different. Yeah. Thank you. Laura, you have matching color today, too. <laughs> what? <laughs> your clothes and your background. Yeah, they have really nice color. <laughs> oh, you mean the background? Yeah, yeah. your background. Such a the beautiful. virtual background? Yeah. Yeah. Your background and your dress. The colors. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, Alaska. No, not Alaska. May I? I noticed that um, Dora's early work, uh, the colors were mostly um, reddish, orange, yeah. oh. and and then you evolved into all different colors. I I saw that right now. I do a lot of uh, gradation of the color, like a blue gradually going to a purple and then- Yeah, blue, purple, yeah, very nice. Yeah, and some uh, sometimes a little bit more subtle, more more like a dark and then light and dark, more variation, yeah. Uh, not so harsh color, very sharp color, no. Well, hi. 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 Laura Bob. I remember you. You were in our Tai Chi class. Yes. Actually, I, I listened to you both the presentation. I really enjoy and very much admire both of you, the talent. And I'm very amazed by how good you both look. So that's why I want to ask you. Do you look still look look at you. <laughs> you look very good, very young. I look do you still practice Tai Chi every day? I do. Oh, Not that's good. Right. How about you? No, actually, I I I don't practice every day, but I joined the uh, Pan Tai Chun's class oh, to learn good. the Tai Chi and Tai Chi Jian, Tai Chi Sword. Oh. So it was very interesting. Yeah. 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 I, 
I, I'm, I'm doing Tai Chi every day myself, but mm -hmm. my form is getting worse and worse. I need some corrections. But we do have a Tai Chi here, but he's not very good. But mm -hmm. he's doing more like a, a, some of those Padujin. You know what's Ba Duan Jing? Ba Duan Jing. Ba Duan Jing. That's an exercise form. It's yeah. good. It's really more like a, for old people. Yeah. yeah. But I'm then, good to join the Tan Tai Chun's class. He's really good. Oh, where, uh, where are you learning? Where is the uh, where are they? No, we, we do our Zoom. You also do the in person. And doing two, are you doing in person now? Yeah, no, I don't do in person. But actually, you can go to uh, his house uh, for in person. But if you don't want to go to his house, we are on Zoom to learn from Zoom uh, meeting. So that was very good. We practiced Tai Chi and Tai Chi sword. Now we are doing the matching sword. So it, it's really nice. Would you like to join us? What time do you have it? Uh, 2, 2 p.m. every Sunday. Oh, yeah, Sunday. Mm. Yeah, she has several classes. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can put you in contact with him. Oh, I talk to him and uh, find out more info for you. Well, we think about it. When we enter, we'll get in touch with you. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I think I he's really good. You can't find any better teacher than him. How long is each section? Uh, it's one hour, slightly more than one hour, yeah. So, you know, I remember you and Bob both are very, very good in Tai Chi. But not anymore. We are, <laughs> we are getting old. Everything is stiffer. <laughs> <laughs> but we were good like before. Bob was yes. perform alone, you know, I remember. I know, I remember that. You, you learn from... Uh, Who's that? My yeah. boss. Uh, um, my boss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, but, but before that, I have to say, I may start with something very dumb. Have you thought about using the optical fiber? Optical fiber? Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. It is very similar to what, what, what you have been using. It's a yarn. But once you do that, I guess you can open up another dimension because you can send in signals, lights, different colors, and a very fine, very fine dimension. Mm -hmm. I, actually, uh, I do some of the artwork, like optical illusion. With right. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, Allow me to say this. Uh, our internet is benefited by optical fiber. And, uh, and it's tremendous new opportunity because now you can you can shine the light through your 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 your, your artwork. So it's, it will be coming four-dimensional. Interesting. Oh. Anyway. That is interesting. Thank you. Thank you for telling us. I love all the look to it. My wife is, is punching my, my, my leg, leg now, so I have to, to, to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking for your question. Yes. If I, if I say something makes sense, maybe we should have another conversation. And i like to, to visit your place to, to find out all the dimensional issues. Oh, wow. But I do believe your fiber can be as fine as the optical fiber used in the internet. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's another invention. Okay, I'm knocking him again. Leave, leave, leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have another? Do we have another? Do we have another? Do we have another? No, thank you. Thank you very much for the oh, thank great you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you all for for joining. Yeah, 那个我现在打个岔，灿灿要不要 announce 一下我们那个自由谈这个月没有，要不要？灿灿，我没有 announce。我们第二，我们那个 Thanksgiving 前面那一天，灿灿要不要 announce 一下？谢谢啊。嗯、oh. ，你 Yeah, you can announce. 嗯，啊 ，Yeah, so November, um. Yeah, we won't have any uh, zero time program. Yeah, because the the person originally scheduled uh, won't be here. So it's before Thanksgiving. So we'll just everyone have relaxed and a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yeah, we won't have any Zoom uh, meeting in November. Yeah, but we will have uh, we will resume it in uh, next year January. So we will still have a Christmas party in December. Mm -hmm. Please watch on the time and uh, because I know Lumini is uh, preparing a very exciting program for us. Sorry, you have a question? Just a Christmas party. Oh, just a Christmas party. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you.